The forests of Trinidad and Tobago are home to a number of remarkable and exotic species. One such place is the Aripo Savannah's Strict Nature Reserve Environmentally Sensitive Area. There, all types of life forms converge in a rich display of biodiversity. However, the creature that is rarely captured on camera is the elusive ocelot. The ocelot is the only carnivorous wildcat in the Caribbean archipelago and as a nocturnal apex predator, it knows how to avoid detection. It's easy for the casual observer to confuse this species with the leopard, but the ocelot is smaller, with an average body length of less than one meter. At that size, its weight is usually between 11 and 16 kilograms. The ocelot's coloration is also distinct, with short cream and brown colored fur with varying stripes, spots and rosettes. It may also have chains of black bordered spots running along the tail and the back. Its tail may be ringed with black or show black bars running along the top. These markings are unique and allow researchers to identify and track each individual. For cat lovers, the ocelot's preference for solitude and open distrust will be familiar. But that is to be expected, as it really is a jungle out there. Not too far away, humans have encroached on this strict nature reserve with medium-sized poultry farms being set up on the border with the forest. This gives the ocelot a choice on the menu, in addition to its regular diet of small forest animals. This chicken is apparently badly injured after escaping from a nearby farm. It seeks to recover in a quiet area. The vultures sense a meal in the making but it is not their time yet. Chicken Little is not ready to go. The next hungry candidate is a cautious salipenta, known locally as the mat and in Guyana as the bush motorbike because of its speed. Chicken Little does not entertain his advances and fights off the lizard who scuttles away with several scratches for his efforts. But as the night falls, the apex predator awakens. Soon, Chicken Little is gone, quicker than a flash. A wandering Maniku thinks there's some leftovers on offer, but he's lucky that the ocelot is already full, and so escapes being the wild cat's dinner. But although the ocelot might be the king of the local bushlands, it does have at least one natural predator, the anaconda. It's fortunate that the habitats of these two do not overlap significantly, since the ocelot has been sighted throughout the country, from within the northern range to deep in the oil fields in the Guayaguayari forest. Well, I am 100% certain that when the ocelot is local, the ones we have identified as local, they have black noses. Um, there may be a hybrid where you have black and pink, but the nose must be dark. Whenever I see a pink nose ocelot, I've never seen one in Trinidad that is a Trini ocelot. So a pink nose ocelot will indicate someone from the mainland or smuggling from somewhere else, but it's not a Trini. The biggest problem we have with the ocelots in a captive situation is the fact that they're very prone to picking up diseases from domestic wildlife, uh, parvo, distemper, um, then these animals are not vaccinated and the problem with regards to vaccinating the animals is that we do not have the proper vaccine for wildlife rehab available here in Trinidad. Its biggest threat so is man. Of course this would have been here tied up most of them that be using this blue string in particular and um, the hunter will put himself on top here 
Of course, let's still rest his feet on, be a little more comfortable and um, perch here and wait for the animal to pass. Most likely the animal would have been passing here. Mm. Wait there with his gun to shoot. This is an old scaffold because of the, um, the blue not so brilliant and of course it gets weak for the weather. Mm -hmm. So this is an old scaffold. So you know that would have been here some time ago. The other one we passed looking like it was relatively new. The ocelot's luxurious pelt has been a highly sought after item for decades and is used to make bags, belts, boots and coats. In the Americas, it was slaughtered by the millions. The local population is now legally protected by its designation as an environmentally sensitive species or ESS. According to the Environmental Management Act, one can be fined $100,000 and face imprisonment for two years if one commits an offense, as outlined in the EM Act, against an ESS. A project to develop a management plan for the protection of the species is underway with the relevant stakeholders, including the University of the West Indies. One of the first tasks of the team is to understand the population of the ocelot and map its habitat. Although it's an environmentally sensitive species, we do not have a lot of data on the species. As such, we embarked on this project and one of the objectives of the project is to collect data, especially density data on the species. What we decided to do was consult with our stakeholders, the University of the West Indies, who have done similar projects and they advise us that what we can do is use camera trapping methodology. They advise us that this is the best method for monitoring ocelots in the field where we use dual or paired camera trapping. What this does is that when we place the camera traps opposite each other, when the animal passes in front of the tree, it actually captures both sides of the animals and then we'll be able to analyze the photos using the individual spot patterns on the species to identify individuals which will then tell us density. In the meantime, the public education strategies for the ocelot include interactive workshops, training sessions and lectures. Media releases, signs, posters and brochures are also used to help increase awareness of the ocelot. The objective of the management plan is to have an effective recovery and management plan as along with monitoring measures for conservation of the species. We do not have one for the ocelot at the moment. One of the first steps we're going to do is to conduct an extensive literature review on the species. We're going to bring together all the stakeholders involved in conservation of the species to then develop a mission, vision, approaches and strategies towards conservation of the species. At any time you're trying to save an animal, you have to save where it is from. So that's why I uh, tell people I'm an environmentalist and it has to do with both ways. I can't tell you save the animal and forget you. I have to find a way to work both sides of it and to make sure that the animal can have a habitat. Because I could breed all your sluts in the world, where am I going to put them? So right now, our well, biggest problem in Trinidad is shrinking homes for the animals. In Trinidad, we are the only island in the Caribbean that we have a wildcat exists. The ocelot is very important to our ecosystems because it controls the balance um, here on the island because it's naturally found there. It wasn't introduced or anything. And um, of course, keep the um, check based on the, um, the animals it feed on. So it contributes a lot to our ecosystem. And um, if it go extinct here on the island, it can cause some imbalances in our ecosystem. Plenty of our, what we have presently in our lives, food and clothing come from the forest. So I, I believe in giving back to the forest plays a big part in a human's life. To me, I think that um, it is important because it's something that we could call our own, right? Because it isn't found anywhere else in the Caribbean, right? Um, I think this project would actually help to add protection to them because we would know where they are, right? Um, what kind of activity would be in the Aripo Savannah, you know, in terms of humans, if the humans really pose a threat to them. Conservation, protection, improved awareness 
and education and respect for this environmentally sensitive species will ensure that the exotic splendor of the ocelot can be enjoyed by this and future generations.